Hi, hello, and congratulations. If you are listening to me right now, you have survived the football this summer. Thank you, baseball. Thank you, summer games, NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, all in the rearview mirror. Now, right before us is football season. It's already underway. Don't trust me. Don't take my word for it. Go ask Florida State. Their season's already over. It was over before Labor Day, but that's college football. Today, we're going to focus in on pro football here to do it with us. 15-minute pregame style. We're going to tell you the final score of every upcoming week one NFL game, and we're going to do it with some pace. You don't need all the jive this close to kickoff. What you need are the final scores, some good props to play. So let's do it. There's Eddie Spaghetti behind the glass in Staten Island and seated high atop show business. His usual perch, ready to tell us what's going down in pro football and, and in fantasy football, too. We just had our big kick out in our league there. It's Kevin Hench. What's the poop, fella? And let me say, spoiler alert, I survived. I am still in the league. I should maybe I maybe, maybe I should have left that to you. But no, uh, listen. Of course, you survived. What kind of jackass would throw mm, his mm. his podcast partner out right. of the fantasy football league? An on asshole. The That's the football season. Like it, your move to eliminate me after we started this podcast was so insane. And and I'm a better man, obviously, because I even though I would have been within my rights. To, to do the same thing to you, um, mm. I chose the the gentler path, which was um, kicking out the only team that hadn't been kicked out, which I, you know, I feel like was fair. Men of justice. That's uh, right. That's and I, it. And I, you know, I obviously tried to make it fun so that uh, you and you and uh, the Jennies were, were on the hot seat sweating it Just out. Just very quickly, on, on the off chance, you have no idea what we're talking about. Our fantasy football league about 20 years ago installed the rule that survivor style that the previous uh, year's champ gets to at the draft kick out somebody of his choosing. Hench beat me by a sliver last year. George Pickens barely unable to elude the Seahawks tackler that would have given me the margin of victory, but Hench held on to win the crown a figurative crown or trophy because there is no physical trophy anymore. Somebody lost that a couple of years ago. I don't remember who that was. Either way, Hench had the power to kick somebody out. And so he kicked out the Bar Owls, the only team, like he said, that had never been kicked out to this point. So justice served there. But yes, Ham was there sweating it out just like everybody out. Although he took, a, he made a bold fashion move, I felt. He the entire draft was it to intimidate us to distract us he sat with his shirt wide open a button down but wide open i don't know who that was for um i was not swayed by it anyway Hedge, back to you because you were on the zoom you had a better look at that than we did i never mm. i couldn't you guys were in little boxes so i didn't i didn't but i i uh I, I, the dream boat going like sean connery with the the chest hair on display. Wow. He had those nipple been... rings left over from Fargo. Great in that, but now that's his new personality, I guess. I don't know. Um, so so that was delightful. And I think we should we need to say, like we need to say every and maybe every week now, say uh that this podcast is in no way funded by Russian fucking scumbags, that we do not get our funding hmm. from the okay. fucking Kremlin, from the GRU from the Russian security services. And by the way, I, I don't understand. I literally, I don't understand how this anti-Americanism became so acceptable, so fashionable. If if I knew Tim Pool, if I worked with Tim Pool, like I would go across the conference room table and attack that little smurf. Like what is happening that this is okay, that Tim Pool and Dave Rubin and Ben Johnson are are sponsored by Russia to propagate anti-American, anti-democracy talking points on their podcasts. Like, how is this acceptable? I'm losing my mind, as you can tell. But none of these picks that we're about to, to get into have been provided by the Kremlin or Vladimir Putin. These are our picks. These are our opinions. Uh, and we are not owned by an enemy of America. What the fuck is going on? 
No, anyway, nothing right. more American than pro football. So let's dig in on that one. Eddie Spaghetti did not have the time, apparently, to go and take care of Putin. As he promised a few years ago, he was off at Pearl Jam shows. One of my pals, Vandy. Well, just he's saw got him, uh, he's got more local scumbags he can he can target uh, with apparently. that size, man. Uh, apparently, um, Spaghetti, two shows of Pearl Jam, huh? Get the, you know. Cleansing your palate um, in time so you can focus in on Malik Neighbors, Danny Dimes, the rest of it. I'm not sure I'll be focusing on the Giants too much. Uh, I wish we were talking more about the Irish because uh, that's the one season I'll care about. But yeah, this was a spur of the moment, last minute trip home. Had a friend going to the one night, brought me, uh, ended up finding cheaper tickets so I can go with my brother on night two. Uh, you cannot miss uh, Pearl Jam at the Garden. It's just like the it's the Mecca. It's where they play their best shows. Uh, it's an incredible experience. So I was glad to be back in that building. Uh, haven't been there uh, too many times over the last few years. So it was great to be uh, in Midtown Manhattan. Okay, let's give you our picks. Good for you to see that game of the week in my estimation is the other New York team or New Jersey team, Aaron Rodgers and company traveling across football America to play the Niners. That's the last game of the week. We'll get to that one eventually. Shall we jump into it, fellas? Like I say, best wishes with it. Oh, you know, I, I what kind of uh, gentleman am I? I want to I want to say welcome to the cool cats, a a dynasty unlike any other that uh, mankind has ever seen. Welcome to the team, Jonathan Taylor, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Puka Nakua, and Joe Burrow. How about that team, Eddie Spaghetti? Do you want to know who's at, who else? Uh, what everybody else's team looks like? We don't have time because we have to talk about the Jags and the Dolphins. A hideous uniform matchup. Heel versus Aqua. That's no way to start things off, but that's where we're going to start it off either way. Don't love the hook on this one for the home team, which is Miami. Minus three and a half is what they're laying at the time of this recording. Total on this one is 49. I'm going to go 33 to 28 Dolphins. Um, barely covering that one in what is more or less a shootout. How say you, Kevin Hench? Well, we we agree with the over, um, uh, and we have our but we have our first separate garages. It was exciting. Wow. Um, uh, you know, uh, Spaghetti and I both like the Jags this year, and I'm going to plant my flag in Week One, and I'm picking the Jags outright, thirty to twenty four road win uh, and a statement win for a team that I think is going to bounce back to form. I hear you, obviously, based on, and you can go back and uh, listen to and watch on YouTube and Twitter, and uh, obviously wherever you find your podcast, you can hear our one through seven seeds for both the AFC and the NFC. We did those over the course of last week's shows. Um, I have the Dolphins winning the division, and I have the Jags missing the playoffs outright, so it shouldn't surprise you in week one that I'm taking the Dolphins over the Jags, a good prop that caught my eye. I mentioned shootout there. Trevor Lawrence over 251 and a half pass yards. I think both QBs um, go over with their respective pass total. Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I'm similar to, to Hench's score there. I'll, I'll have the Jags winning this one outright as well. 31 to like 27, 28-ish. I think that what's going to happen is the Jags will have the lead. The Dolphins kind of storm back there. But, you know, the the Dolphins, uh, I, they have a couple of holes in my opinion. I, I do think there's a high risk of injury uh, to both of their running backs, which is going to be a problem for them. But I do think that both Waddle Hill and Tua all have great seasons. Uh, but I just like this Jags team. I think that what they did in the draft, getting Brian Thomas was a, a great move there to pair him with Gabe Davis. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, who exploded last year. Plus, you have ETN behind Trevor Lawrence. That's a really nice offense. A, no a couple of nice pieces on defense. Josh Hines Allen now. And let's see if uh, Trevon Walker could really take that next step uh, in the league. And plus, he's playing next to uh, Eric Armstead. So, I just like this overall Jags team. I know people are high the Texans, but I think the Jags have a really, really nice season. It's going to start in week one. I think that division in general is a brute. Next up, Cardinals, Bills, home team, Buffalo, laying six and a half. Total is 48. I've got the Bills winning it 30 to 21. I think they are not inclined to mess around and um, have to rally in the second half of the season like they did a year ago. I think that they lean more and more on James Cook and away from Josh Allen as a runner. I like him. Over 61 and a half rush yards. As a matter of fact, I say boost it up the alt rush line to 71 and a half rush yards. I still think you're safe there and uh, you get plus money for that. Plus 126. Hench, how say you? 
This is another uh, this is another statement game for my season, which could go south in week one. But I like I like the Cardinals this year. I, think I knew it. I knew you would do that. I think they're going to surprise a lot of teams, and I think they open with a road victory outright, twenty six twenty four. Um, I, I I just love the direction this Cardinals team is, and and I don't know, like you know, in your in all of our multiple fantasy leagues, like how high. Trey McBride's price was like it's like people believe people believe and so uh I count me in in with the believers I like the Cardinals outright 26 24. Yeah I like the cards too I don't like their defense um I love that offense I don't like the division they're in if they're gonna make a playoff run here but I do think I talked to our pal here on minus three Ty Dunn on his great show go long earlier this week and I don't think there's anybody out there right now who benefits more from his quarterback than Sean McDermott does. Imagine if you had just a league average quarterback. That team would be absolutely irrelevant. Josh Allen, though, hero that he is, keeps that team afloat and a Super Bowl contender here in 2024. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? I wish I had the balls to to do what Hench did. I'm close, but I think it's early on in the season for the Cardinals. They will be fine this year. They should be a fun, a pretty fun offense. But I think home game kind of like a a statement. And this is a weird energy with the Bills. Like the team looks different. Uh, they know they probably clutter you know near the end of their window here. But I have them winning thirty to twenty with this new look Bills. No more Stephon Diggs. It's going to be the James Cook show. It's going to be the Dalton Kincaid show. And hopefully Josh Allen is not playing too much hero ball to get them into trouble. So uh, I, I do see the Bills winning this this one and, a, and maybe a, a, a struggling season for them. Next up, it's the Titans at the Bears, the debut of Caleb Williams. Not really a debut, I guess, if you've been watching Hard Knocks. His personality fascinates me, and I'm not down on it. It is uh, everything seems very med- premeditated with me. His behavior, because he has been in the system. This is the product of of all the coaching up. And I don't just mean quarterback camps and and all of that. I mean, the last decade or so has become about, you know, guys getting coached up on their comportment, how they interview and all that kind of stuff. It all feels like manufactured stuff. I think that he's the real deal as a quarterback though. I don't know that any quarterbacks ever been positioned to thrive coming out of the gate the way he is. So I like the bears to make a splash. They're given four here. Total on this one is 45 kind of like the Titans this year. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but they're not a bum team either. I think the home team gets it, but only by three, 24 to 21. And I'll give you Caleb Williams three to one with a rushing touchdown. The rookie QBs like to take off. He'll be looking to impress the home crowd and all of that. I think that adds up to him getting in the end zone and spiking and everybody cheering and all that kind of stuff. Hedge, I'll say you. We're not just, we're not just in the same garage or the same car. We're, we're in the same seat in the same car in the same garage because i have the exact same final score bears 24 <laughs> titans 21 um dude, dude. you know I, it's weird like obviously if for our entire lives which you're getting is quite long now uh mm. it was like yes this guy's going to be a great nfl quarterback but he's not going to light it like rookies don't light it up out of the gate like that is super rare and like going like these these fantasy drafts we're in where it's like people are like, got to get the Bears offense, got to get got to get DJ Moore, got to get a Dunze, got to get Caleb Woods. Like, really? Like, are they really, really going to average 28 points a game? I don't think so. So I think the Titans keep it close, uh, and and, uh, and but the Bears win. Boy, I, I'm surprised by that. And now that all the fantasy drafts have been completed, I can say what I, I've I've tried to keep close to the vest a little bit in anticipation of the drafts. I think Caleb Williams lights it up. I think people every year do this thing about what a rookie quarterback is in real football terms. Look at the numbers. When in peril, rookie QBs, especially ones that have the ability to run, run a lot. Caleb Williams is going to do that. Look at the receivers he has out there around him. It's going to be hard for him to flop statistically at least. So uh, we disagree on what Caleb Williams but is going to be. But one thing we, you Bad and I Bad news do... is the sports guy got Caleb Williams. I really wanted him, but I wasn't in a position in our auction league to get him. Well, so you and I, I agree. To... Uh, I mean, I think you have him as a handcuff, but you and I both got Khalil Herbert for a dollar in separate drafts. And 
I say there's no way DeAndre Swift is healthy for a second consecutive season. So the Khalil Herbert $1 could be a league winner. What's up, Spaghetti? Yeah, I, you know, I want to go against every rookie quarterback. I think there's more uh, probably it's more pro- higher probability that they're, they're going to struggle than play like a CJ Stroud. But when the other opposing quarterback is Will Levis, I'm going to have to side with the the Bears here. So the Bears will win the game, but I do have the Titans covering. If you look at the Titans roster, they actually have more depth, especially at receiver than you realize. Uh, and I think Tony Pollard's probably in a good committee with Ty J Spears, who's going to get a lot of uh, got a lot of work um, this year. But kind of like what uh, Sheck you're talking about with Caleb Williams, his ability to scramble to make plays on the run. He had a n- couple of really nice throws in the preseason. Uh, I don't see Caleb Williams having an, an astounding year this year, but I think he is better than Will Levis, and he will do just enough to get uh, this new look Bears team a uh, win. I have them winning this game uh, twenty. 320 but the titans cover boy i've backed myself up on more than one team with will levis i think he's another guy again to my point about young qbs who like to run the ball and and a good spot to throw it around i think will levis is one of those guys next up let's get to kevin hench's favorite pro football team oh once again great news for the boston sports fans they're celebrating another title in their town congratulations celtics rearview mirror stuff Now grim reality begins. No Bill Belichick. He's all over your TV. He's everywhere on your TV and your laptop. He's nowhere to be found on an actual pro football field. In fact, he's on his old team is on to Cincinnati. It's the Bungles laying eight total on this one. 41. I'm going to take the Bengals to win and to cover it. Double digit victory. This is one of those teams I've circled much like the Kansas City Chiefs. Joe Burrow, student of history. Obviously spent the majority of last season watching on the sideline. I think he understands where his team is in terms of players, their contracts, T Higgins, some big defensive pieces, probably out of Cincy at the end of this season. I think he wants to strike while the iron's hot. And speaking of which, I don't think the Bengals want another slow roll out of the gate. I think they're incented to to try and fix that um, as is their chief rival, the chiefs. I say the Bengals get this one, cover it. 33 to 17. Hench, how say you? Well, it's wild. You know, when this line, when the week one lines first came out, this was nine and a half. And that was before Christian Barmore's blood clots and Matthew Juden getting traded. And I was, Mm. I was excited about this Patriots defense. I just thought Barmore, Judon, Gonzalez and Duggar was like four elite pieces to a defense that was going to be very good. Now it's severely weakened, obviously, um, and depressing. And everyone's saying three and 14, two and 15 for the Patriots. That said, I still think this number's a little high where we mm. we're all assuming Burrow is, is, is right. Um, we'll, we, we wait, we'll wait to be seen on that, but, uh, I like the Bengals 23-17. Uh, I think the Patriots keep it close. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, obviously the things are fluid in, in Cincy too in terms of of who's, who Burroughs is, is throwing to. But uh, I, I think that number is a little big for week one. By the way, how fluid are they in Cincy? The, there are, it's really hard to get receiving props on that side of things right now because of Chase and all that's going on there. It does certainly appear like Jamar Chase is going to be out there and active. Um, I think that's a foregone conclusion at this point. Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I mean, this is kind of why, you know, I wasn't super high in the Bengals because the, uh, you know, their offense, if Jamar Chase is not playing, then it's a pretty average offense. And like Joe Burrow doesn't have a ton of great pass catchers to go to their running backs aren't with Moss and, and Chase Brown. That combo is not that great, um, but they are playing the New England Patriots. And, you know, to be nice to hand share, I, I feel terrible for them because it's going to be a very, very boring season. But they're doing the smart thing by letting Drake may sit in the bench. Uh, I do think Jalen Polk in the future will have a really nice career. And that defense does have some nice pieces, but this is not the game for them. Jamar Chase just practiced. So it looks like he's going to be back. He says he's going to be back for week one. Um, I, I think this is like a 32, 18 sort of score in here. And then they'll, they'll cover comfortably no matter the lines eight or not up to nine and a half or whatever it is. Look how spaghetti plays like that. Like that's, I said, 33, 17 or 33, 16. Is that what I just said? Anyway, spaghetti pretty closely mirrored 
my the, score. The Bengals will cover. Way. It'll be a big. It'll yeah. be a big gap. So whatever. Now, I just don't think that. I just don't think they're inclined to go through what they've put themselves through with these with these slow starts. I think they see a meager foe rolling into town, and they're gonna. Uh, have okay, some. this is a good example. Like you know, so we like we go. Okay, we got to be fast. We got to go fast. Okay, let's go. That goes and Shay goes. Oh, I will be. I will be fast. And then he he promised. He tells the lie of fifteen minutes at the top of the podcast. Then he, he goes. Yeah, we'll we'll be fast. And then he goes back and like revisits our comments. No, you're right. Like, let's go. Here we go. go. Let's do here. Here's a fascinating game. If it weren't for Niners and Jets, this might be the best game of the week. Texans and Colts, if you can believe it, that those two teams are the featured game, at least in my brain. Colts lay in three, total 48 and a half. The start of potentially something special for the next decade plus with Anthony Richardson and CJ Stroud. I see, I say CJ Stroud goes over seven and a half rush yards. Is it spaghetti or hench? I can't remember, to be honest, and I, I need to give credit where it's due, who pointed out the less than obviously mobile QBs. When you see a single digit QB rush total, take the over. It's going to pay out quite a bit. All he has to do is snap off one run over the course of 60 minutes. I like that. I also like Jonathan Taylor going over his 72 and a half rush yards. I like the uh, the Texans to win the game. And I like them to win it by a touchdown. Hench, how say you? You know, this is one of those games where where the the Texans have just been anointed in a way where it's like, okay, obviously they're going to be playing into the playoffs. And it's like, that may be true, but I think this Colts team is pretty solid. And, you know, Richardson obviously showed some pretty intriguing flashes. Uh, and, and a healthy Taylor is a, a, a difference maker. I like the Colts to win outright 27-24. Spaghetti, how say you? Wow, uh, I'm shocked. I guess I'm different. I'm I'm pro Texans in this game, even though I do think they'll come back to earth in the season. I, that's why I have the Jacks very close to them. But uh, I, you know, why, like I don't know why we kind of anointed Anthony Richardson as already as being this like he's going to be great. Like he wasn't that great in Florida. He just was pretty raw. Has a lot of like good physical tools. Uh, but we were just making fun of Will Levis, and people don't give Will Levis the praise, and he beat him in college. And I know college doesn't matter, but Anthony Richardson comes in the league and he rushes around. And he gets injured. Hasn't really proven anything. Uh, I do like the team if he is healthy and he could, you know, they, the receiving core with Pittman and Josh Downs, who was banged up all training camp. Jonathan Taylor should be fine. But the, this Texans team is loaded. I mean, all the pass catchers. And I, I think CJ Stroud is going to keep ascending. Uh, I, I have them winning and, and covering uh, comfortably. I, I'll have them winning this game like 30 to 22. Next up, let's uh, let's turn our gaze to Eddie Spaghetti's favorite pro football team. The Vikings are paying a visit to the Gents, the Gents. Boy, gut punch. It's Sam Darnold coming to town, and you're a home dog? <laughs> the gents are plus a point and a half total on this one. 41. Yeek. You know what? Vote of confidence. 23-20. Danny Dimes and company. That's what I say. And I also say the Giants go over 20 and a half, obviously, um, on their side of things, 20 and a half total points. That pays out at plus 105. Hench, I'll say you. Well, uh, same garage in terms of the the uh, the winner. I like the Giants by a field goal in this one. I think 2017, I like it under. But, uh, mm. <laughs> you know, I'm a... Uh... I'm the last, I'm going to be the last DJ holdout, man. I, I just, I don't, I, I don't know how you can evaluate a guy with, with no protection. I actually think he's, he's, he's better. You know, we've talked about it on this podcast. He takes a lot of shit, but I think, you know, he's better than people realize and, and nobody can throw the football with a guy in their lap. So, um, you know, the, in the DJ versus Darnold uh, matchup, I think the Giants actually have an edge. Yeah, I'm going to kick it down the road by a week or three. Let's see what Malik Neighbors does. I do anticipate, though, that certainly Brian Dable, if anybody knows how to get the ball in the hands of a playmaker who he was desperate to get, and I'm not trying to glean too much from hard knocks, but it was pretty clear that Dable had his eye on that cat and that cat alone. Among all the options that they were discussing, he was laser focused on what neighbors could do for him. You know, I think Brian Dable, in fact, understands pro football offense in the 21st century. He wanted that guy. I just don't think week one, I necessarily am going to bet him to go over his personal totals, but do watch him by the end of September. I bet you he's soaring. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? 
Look, if you're a Giants fan or part of the Giants, you got to you know circle these games in the calendars. That you have the actual opportunity to win this game as a game versus uh, Sam Darnold and a team that you kind of uh, you know suck the life out of their uh, window because you go and beat them on the road in a playoff game a couple of years ago. I know it's a totally different looking roster, but um, I, I just think that you know with the Giants' improved offensive line and signing uh, Adore Jackson recently, which helps in this game too with the the Vikings receivers here to go alongside Deontay Banks, hopefully to slow down JJ. I, I just think this is a game you have to win. There's not many games on the schedule where you can go in confidently and say like, yeah, we could, we, we may have the better quarterback than him. And I, I just think that uh, Singletary will get the job done. Daniel Jones will just do just enough. And this aging secondary, the Vikings, the defense is not very good. In my opinion, I think the giants could score just enough to win as uh, home dogs, but they're going to win outright uh, 16 to 14. Hmm. I like Singletary. I mean, people, you know, the Saquon absence three car makes there's no there's no beeping. What, 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 what? Three car beep, garage. Beep, beep. I'm gonna do it myself. I, I I think that people. I I think that his rush total Singletary is 51 and a half. I think he gets to at least 60 or so because of the Vikings defense in part. Um, it, it's as though because Saquon left that they uh, that people perceive the Giants to just have zero running backs. Now, that's not the case. I think they will actually turn around and hand the ball off periodically. And another quick point that. that I didn't mention is like Sam Donald's known for ha- seeing the ghosts. Remember that story? The Giants have Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns rushing him. I think that's the key to the game. That should be fun. Yeah, I think people that's one of the least covered things is that Brian Burns is there. OK, let's get to my game now. Pittsburgh Steelers, Atlanta Falcons, the home team in that nice dome down in Hotlanta, lay in three, total 42. Boy, oh boy, some skepticism there from the bookmakers. 42 is all. I say that the Falcons win it, but they don't cover. That's right. I'm going right in there. 20 to 19, the home team survives. I think Najee Harris gets into the end zone, though. Clearly, Arthur Smith is going to be handing the ball off. A great dealer, Russell Wilson, slash Justin Fields is going to be handing the ball off quite a bit. Jalen Warren coming back from a hamstring that points to Najee getting the vast majority of touches to start the season here. Najee Harris gets in the end zone plus 120 if he gets a touchdown at any point. Hench, I'll say you. Uh this is such a great week 1 matchup. It's really intriguing. I like I actually like both these teams to make the playoffs. Hmm. Um I I think Falcons win 20 to 16. They cover. It goes under uh you know, the Steelers Russell Wilson, whatever it, it, the Steelers are, the Steelers, that defense is excellent. They're going to be what they are. We know right around where they're going to finish. You know, the Falcons are the fascinating thing. Like B. John Robinson is incredible. And his only limitations seem to be Desmond Ritter. So now if you, re, if you, if, if you actually have to honor London and Pitts, uh, and and Robinson gets all that extra room to roam. Uh, we you know we could find out week one just how good that guy is. Well, uh, you know I I was surprised by how bullish we all were on the Falcons. I have them as the number one seed in the NFC, so can't get much higher up than that. In fact, I don't think you can get any higher up than that. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? If you think there's going to be some kind of track meet where the Falcons are coming in and throwing the ball around the yard, I, I just don't see that happening at all. I think this is almost like a kryptonite sort of matchup for the Falcons. Uh, and I am high in the Falcons, but as I've said for week in, week out, I've been very, very high in the Steelers going forward. And why? I just think that they're going to just take the air out of the football. They're going to own time of possession, just run the ball with both Najee and, and Warren. I know Warren's banged up. I just think, you know, Russ Wilson, dink and dunk, move down the field, score when you have to. And I think that Kirk Cousins having Watt chasing him down, I could see definitely like a, a sack fumble. I could see an interception and, and Kirk getting kind of frazzled in this game because this defense could make you do that. And I, I have the Steelers winning this game outright. I have them winning this game, you know, 25, 21, I'll say. Uh, I just think that it's going to be a shocking, almost like nation, like the nation will be surprised at how good the Steelers look in this game when there's a lot of high hopes for the Falcons. So I'm talking up your boys quite a bit here Shaq. Ooh, i like it you know there are 31 teams in pro football and then there are the pittsburgh steelers um panthers saints let's quick pick this one uh saints laying four at home 41 and a half here i'm taking the panthers um as the road dog here and i'm gonna go under on these two bum teams that neither neither team makes themselves relevant in 2024 and this is 
the last go for Dennis Allen there as a head coach in pro football. Hench, I'll say you. I agree with the last go for Dennis Allen part, but it doesn't start week one. I have the Saints covering uh, 24-14. Spaghetti. 23-13 Saints. I have no reason to pick Bryce Young uh, to win a game until proven otherwise. Denver is in Seattle. A lot of people late, I've noticed, are in on the Broncos. Um, I get it that there's the Raiders are probably not a great team and the Chargers are a little unknown. That doesn't equal me being excited about Bo Nix or anything else going on there. I am uh, more bullish on the Seahawks. I don't have them getting in ultimately, but they're going to make a run at the playoffs there with Geno and the new look Seahawks with McDonald. I say that uh, at home in week one, lay in six, total 42. I say they cover and the two teams combined to go over. Hench, I'll say you. Uh, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm in your garage. I think this is a Seahawks cover. I think this is actually a blowout. I have the Seahawks 30, Broncos 10. The, you know, DK Metcalf, JSN, Walker, these are weapons. These are real weapons. And the thing that people have noticed is Geno Smith's good. That, that was the surprising part, you know? And so uh, whatever, whatever growing pains the Broncos are going to go through, they're going to, they're going to be extremely painful. And it's starting week one with a blowout loss. And those helmets that they have, their new helmets are terrible. And the uniforms in general stink. Spaghetti. I'm with Hench here. It's going to be a total smashing. I have a 34 17 win here uh, for the Seahawks. I, I haven't seen many people say this or bring this up in this conversation, but I really do think the Broncos may have the worst record in the NFL this year. Uh, I just, again, don't trust the rookie quarterback, especially Bo Nix. Pass catcher is not great. Cortland Sutton never really proved to what he be what he was. John D. Williams can't stay healthy. A lot of other holes, too, in the offense. So I, I, I just think this team is going to have a rough, rough year. Fascinating spiritual matchup of week one is the Raiders at Chargers. Generally, Raiders fans in Los Angeles puff their chests out and announce to Rams and Chargers found this is still our town, not yours, even if we play in Nevada and you play here in uh, in L.A. Um, I think Jim Harbaugh is intent on establishing a new world order or West Coast order here. I think he starts it in week one by physically beating up the Raiders and then beating them on the scoreboard as well. I say that the Chargers covered the three that they're giving. I say they go over the 40 and a half. The two teams do. Hench, how say you? I like the Chargers to cover here. I do think, you know, Harbaugh is it's a safe bet. You know, it's, you know, when he arrives in town, things are going to start looking up. And I, I do think the way you neutralize Max Crosby is to run the ball at him. And, you know, so we don't, you know, fantasy owners don't really know Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, or the third guy, like who's going to be doing it, but there's going to be a lot of it. And then the other thing, you know, Herbert is awesome. And if if he's not one-dimensional, he'll be that much better. So I think, you know, the Chargers are are going to make a big leap this year and the Raiders are not. Yeah, and, you know, as far as that goes, the, the Raiders may not make a big splash this year. I, the, the over makes sense here, even though the Chargers f- uh, figure to run the ball a lot here because they the Chargers aren't going to have a good defense, and I do think Jim Harbaugh is going to be able to uh, show a new way to approach offense to Chargers fans here by run, run, run behind that big, brutish offensive line. Spaghetti, how say you? Upset special. I I think uh, Raiders win this game uh, 21-20. I think it's going to be one of those uh, last-minute victories for them. I think the Raiders, this is going to be their MO all year. They're going to kind of, like, they'll be the spoiler team. They'll be, like, hovering, I think, around uh, 500. So I'm a little bit higher than most people are. Uh, I just think that, you know, Zamir White's going to have a pretty good season. He's, like, an old-school running back. And Devontae Adams is still Devontae Adams. And uh, the Chargers got significantly worse. Like, you're going to be ground and pound. I don't think the running backs should be J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards personally uh the defense still has some nice pieces but jo- joey bose is constantly injured who is justin herbert throwing to i mean they like quentin johnson i have better hands than him so uh it's going to be the lad mcconkey show uh, i don't know if i'm going to buy into that immediately uh garner Minshew will play spoiler and they're going to win week one i hope you heard that quentin challenge laid down let's see who has better hands um in the meantime he's, he's the one of the few receivers who's bigger than spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> Not positive, um, but uh, yeah, listen, let's get them side by side. Tail of the tape at best hands, bigger. All right, is this us picking Bella. up the pace? I can't tell. 
Browns laying two and a half to the visitors from down south. Um, total on this one is 43 and a half. I think the Browns understand, and I think deep down their fans know that they're screwed. Nick Chubb isn't playing for the first four weeks. Defense doesn't, just because it was great one year, doesn't mean it carries over. Look it up. The statistics will bear out that I'm right about this, that they had a great defense. Doesn't mean it's going to carry the day this year. It may be great, but Deshaun Watson is still their quarterback. Everybody understands he is a deficit in the quarterback league. I think the Cowboys go in there and really, right out of the gate, make make the Cleveland people it reminds them who they are. They're the Browns, after all. I think the Cowboys get this one on the road, and I think they combine to go over the 43 and a half. Hench, I'll say you. Uh, I think the Cowboys win this outright. Uh, I have it under 20. I have Cowboys 20, Browns 17. You know, it, obviously football isn't just vibes, but vibes matter, and the vibes are bad in Cleveland. Like, it's just, it 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 feels like they went, you know, all in 230 million when you you know uh, on on a guy where they were like, look, we're gonna take the PR hit because he's awesome, and it's like now you're taking <laughs> the PR hit and he sucks. It's it's just the vibes have got to be so bad, and then the PR <laughs> hit to get the worst starting quarterback. Yeah, in pro it's football. just shocking. And then you know, and then <laughs> it's not he, shocking. <laughs> it's but the Browns. It, it, I mean, I think no, right? But it is shocking how I mean the throws are shocking. The one hoppers. Yes you know, you know, missing open guys, hitting defenders in the chest. And then, you know, obviously the the thing that would take the pressure off him is having that monster trampling people in the backfield and Chubb's not playing. So I, I'm with you. Defense can only do so much. And I think, you know, I think the Browns finished last in this division. I think they missed the playoffs and it, and it starts week one. Agree with all of that spaghetti. Yeah, I mean, if Dak and company comes in town and they start throwing the ball over, like, and and they like thirty plus points for when to recently sign CD Lamb scores a bunch of touchdowns. The one good thing the Browns had their like Vonda defense is now gone. That that's gonna really kill them. And I, I do think I wish there was an over under on how many games Jameis Winston's gonna play this year because when you have the receiving core they do, and Nick Chubb will eventually come back. Plus you have Njoku. Uh, the defense it should be still pretty good all year long. You have enough like it, it, it doesn't make any sense to just keep playing the guy that you paid because you actually could win games with this roster. And Jameis has his flaws, but I think at least he's not going to be throwing the ball to the dirt like Deshaun has. Um, uh, da the Dak-Lamb combo is lethal, and uh, they are gonna they won't eclipse 30. I'll go 27-19. Uh, I just think this round's offense is going to struggle quite a bit. Sorry to be a flake. I'm going to go under the 43 and a half. That's the right play. I don't know what I was talking about there. Next up, they, you know, obviously the original. Hold on, hold on, check. Hey, Spaghetti, how many minutes into the 15 minute show are we? I I didn't know this was like still we're still doing the 15. I thought we're not like fully a doing that. Yeah. I said we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try. I, mean, I didn't, I, like I didn't clock you on purpose. Mark. Good yeah. Christ. Okay, All go. Right. Here we go. Now listen, they should have kept those Browns, should have kept Baker Mayfield. He now resides in the Tampa St. Pete area where he and his pals will be playing host to the commies from our nation's capital. Buccaneers laying three, total 43 and a half there. Upset special. I'm taking, I'm doing it. I'm taking Quinn's fellas to go down there. I don't like this Buccaneers team. I, 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 I get the vibes are good. They went to the playoffs and all that was big. They won nine games in a crappy division. They, they ain't world beaters and they lost some, some pieces and their pass catchers are a year older as, as we all are. Um, I do think that the commies, I like the vibes coming from Dan Quinn there. I think much like I said, NHL coaches, these retread coaches, stabilizing. I think that's what Quinn does in what has been a fraught situation. So I'm going to take the commies on the road. I'm going to go under Henshaw Stadium. I don't disagree with that long-term or mid-term, but I think in the near term, as in week one, uh, the Bucks win this 26-17. You know, I, I, was, I was down on the Bucks all year last year. I never bought in. And, you know, by the end of the season – Rashad White was just ripping off huge fantasy games week after week. And, you know, and Bake was was finding uh, the sa those same two guys. Like, they're still there. And, you know, Mike Evans, two years ago, like, Mike Evans was going for, like, $4 in fantasy. And then last year, he got a – I mean, this last – you know, this past week, he got a little closer to market rate. But it is weird 
that that guy has never gotten his fantasy due for what he turns in every year. So until he doesn't, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to say, you know, I, I was wrong last year. Uh, uh, I'm, I, you know, the Bucks are, they're just, they're better than we think they are. And I, I think they, they win week one by nine. Well, he may not get his fantasy due, but he is in five years getting a gold jacket or five years after For he sure. retires. Eddie Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, I'm just tired of hearing all this hype around the Commanders. I've heard it the, the last, what, five-plus seasons about how they're going to turn around. <laughs> all this, this hype. This, this defense is going to be great. Oh, oh, when the defense oh, okay. what it was, yeah, they, and even Chase a couple Young. years back. with Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then it's never turned around. It's never they never been a good team. The Gi- Daniel Jones owns the Commanders. Uh, so, yeah, you don't have to love the Bucks. I think the Bucks are going to win this game. And, again, Jaden Daniels, he may be great, but he's still a rookie. And I, I'm more inclined to side against the rookie here in this matchup, especially when you go and trade Jahan Dotson. Like, who you th- you're throwing to McCaffrey's little brother? Like, I, I the offense is a mess. Uh, there's still enough talent on that Bucks team, even though they may not be uh, world beaters, but they're going to be good enough to win this game. I have them winning 24-17. Okay, Lions, everybody's favorite team, it seems, besides their um, actual favorite team, um, hosting the Rams just uh, like they did in the playoffs last year. Detroit giving three and a half. Total is 52 on this one. I don't. I, I feel like the public is going to be all over Detroit in this one, and I think that the Rams, as I said, are slept on. I think that they end up winning the West this year. I'm going to say they started off here um, with a victory. Don't love that hook that exists uh, at the time of this recording there. You know what? On a hunch, I'm going to play the Rams plus three and a half, um, and I'm going to go over this. Two teams that are going to score a lot of points, not just in week one, but all season long. Hench, I'll say you. Well, uh, in the playoffs last year, I took the points when the Rams were, I said Detroit will win, but they won't cover. I think the I think the Lions make a statement week one. I mm. think that I, I like the Rams actually, but I think this one gets out of hand early. Uh I I just think the the Lions have so many weapons. Obviously, there's a there's a gaping hole on the Rams defense this year. Uh Lions 38, Rams 13. I, I just think. Hmm. Once the, the the Gibbs, Amon Ra, Williams, Laporta uh, offense starts churning, get, you know, Aiden Hutchinson gets turned loose. And I just think it's a long day for the Rams. It's been a slow rollout for Jamison Williams, but that doesn't mean he's not going to arrive. And I think he arrives this year and maybe, you know, on Sunday. Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, absolutely. With Jamison Williams, he's a first round pick. They're not giving up on him. Uh, I thought I was going to go kind of, you know, a big blowout here. I was going to go 40 27 with Hench, the, the bigger gap here. I, I like the lines a lot in this one. The Rams front seven does not do it for me. Uh, obviously, losing Aaron Donald stinks, but they, they bring in Jared Verse from FSU. He'll be okay, but it's just a lot of holes. I think Gibbs will have a great day. I think even Montgomery will have a great day not even obviously the passing game too with jared goff who plays most of his games i think he has like every game is inside uh until like december uh, which for him his split stats are not great which is which is really good for jared goff fans and for those who have in fantasy and speaking of fantasy i know i mentioned this and check you push back Kyron williams returning kicks i still think is a terrible idea go draft play quorum rams will be fine but they're going to lose week one you're predicting injury for Kyron Williams because he's a kicker. I love turner? Kyron Williams. I went know. to Notre. He went to Notre Dame. I love the guy, but it, it's it's it, this is a, this is more against Sean McVay. I think it's a bonehead move. I mean, Brian Dable tried this uh, a couple years ago, and he got you know yelled at it like uh, for doing it, and it, it took one game to swap it. So you, you don't want to see your starting running back like break a leg returning a punt. Great news. Audric Estime is a cool cat as of the draft the other night. Jets, Niners in Santa Clara, about an hour outside of San Francisco, that bears the name of the 49ers the Niners are giving four and a half to Aaron Rodgers who's from Northern California you may have heard total on this one is 44 boy I've gone back and forth and back and forth I'm gonna let you go first Tench good Christ (laughs) that's right speaking of speaking of Kyron Williams we need a Kyron on the bottom of this podcast to see how long it's been going on please Um, go please go I, I do like the under in this game, and I'm I am very interested in hearing what Spaghetti uh says on this because he likes both these teams this year quite mm-hmm. a bit. Um, I think the Niners win and don't cover 21-17, goes under. Um, I love Spaghetti's reasoning, the way he explained why he thinks the Niners will be awesome again this year and not have the regression. 
I'm not as high on the Jets as he is, so I, I'll be interested to hear what Spaghetti says. Take it away, Spaghetti. All right. All right. I'm ready to go. I don't want to be accused of, of, of now, just let's uh, riding go. along with let's Spaghetti. Let's Spaghetti go. And you think it's you better? Okay. This, I, I, I have my answer, but okay, well, go ahead. That means Spaghetti. you're predicting what you think I want to say. No, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, well, I, do, I do think I know what you're going to say, but go ahead. I think the Niners win with the Jets cover this game. I think it's hmm. – I, I am high in the yeah. Jets. Uh, I'm high in the Jets, and, and I'm high in the Niners too. I just think, you know, the, the, getting back Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk, obviously that that changes the whole morale of the entire squad. The Ricky Pierce all stuff was uh, absolutely awful, but the fact that he's going to be okay, this is like a clear rally around him game. The, the guys are going to be fired up. Uh, they know this is a really tough week one matchup, and I think the Jets are going to be fine, but you don't want to start your season off. It's, this reminds me exactly of like the Notre Dame A&M game. You, you want to like a guy that's like hasn't really been around and hasn't really got chemistry with people yet because he hasn't really played that much the riley leonard aaron Rodgers, and then your weak one opponent is like this tough defense and it, it's like yeah you don't want to you don't want to do it you want to play the cupcake um i think the jets will be will be okay Brees hall will be limited in this game i think garrett wilson does come alive in this one i think Rodgers shows that spark gets jets fans excited but it's okay to lose to a team that's like constantly in the super bowl discussion the last few seasons jets will be fine close game they'll cover but they're gonna lose I'm going to take the Jets plus four and a half. I think they really have a chance of winning the game outright. I like, Hench, where you are on the under on this one. Um, the IUK and Trent Williams thing is is true, but neither guy has practiced at all. And so I don't think that they're assets necessarily. I, I like where the Jets are. I Obviously, they want to come out of the gate strong after the way they – um, started last season, Aaron Rodgers, uh, number one among them. So I'm going to take the Jets and the under on this one. Quick picks to wrap it up here because they happen before the weekend arrives here. I'm going to take the Eagles to smother, relatively speaking, the Packers offense that was so explosive last year. I'm going to take the Eagles down uh, in Brazil. Uh, congratulations and have fun to our pal, Handsome Hank, down there putting that one together. And I'm going to go under that one, and I'm going to say the Chiefs, do not mess around like they did last year with the Lions at home. I think that they take care of the Ravens on Thursday night football. And I think that uh, these two teams do light it up a little bit. And I think it goes over the 47 and a half. Hench, I'll say you on those two. Well, listen, no no better place for the tush push than than uh, Brazil and the thongs and the <laughs> Brazilian wax job. This is, this is the, the home of the tush. Is Brazil. It's a new tush, though. It's uh, not that Kelsey like the, uh, meaty one. I like the Eagles uh, 31 20. I'm, I'm, I'm in your garage there. And then, even though I like the Chiefs this year, I mean, I like both these teams, obviously. And I do think the number one seed in the AFC could be decided in week one. Um, I am, like I did last year, Thursday night at home. I'm, I am taking the, the Road Warriors to win outright. I like the Ravens 24 mm. 20 over the Chiefs. Bring it on home, spaghetti. Yeah, this the, the Jets, Niners, uh, Ravens, Chiefs, Eagles, Packers, all six teams. I'm very, very high on all these teams. I feel like my pick is going to go. I'm going to say one thing, and the reality will be the opposite of this one. I, I'm going to side with the Eagles and over the Packers, and this one is going to be a close game. Uh, I, I think the Packers have a, a real shot of covering this one, but I think kind of similar to what I said about the Steelers game with, with Saquon, uh, they're going to run the ball a lot more, and they're going to just more control the clock, and, and their receivers are just too tough to, to match up with. And I think the, the Packers receiving core has some to show me a little bit so i think the eagles are going to win this game in down in brazil and uh chiefs ravens boy uh i i guess i'm going to go with mahomes and company uh to start off things right in week one because why else would he not win this game and make our lives miserable for the rex uh, next season uh upcoming here but the ravens should have a fine season i'm going to have uh, the chiefs win and the chiefs will i'm going to have the chiefs covering too good times fellas we paced it up i think we could do a better job but i didn't think it was that Maybe. bad Hinch. Anyway, I maybe, maybe we, I don't know. I don't know where the room is. I think it was all solid gold. What are you going to shave off and uh, leave out? Anyway, listen, I hope your fantasy teams do well. I hope your team wins this weekend in college and pro, unless your team is playing my team. We appreciate you hanging with us here. Keep doing so. We'll be back on the other side of this first weekend of pro football for you. In the meantime, for Hench and Spaghetti, Thanks so much. We'll talk to you, like I say, on the other side. And in the meantime, it's been a thin slice of heaven.